Hello, and welcome to episode two of the Literature Review. Four and a half minutes, give or take, on getting your literature review done on time. In this episode, we're going to take a look at refining your topic through the lens of the research question. In the last episode, we explored the idea that a literature review is all about finding a gap somewhere where your voice can contribute to the greater conversation around the topic. In this episode, we're going to look at three different types of gaps that might emerge and one other approach toward establishing a research question if your research goes forward beyond the literature review stage. It probably won't surprise you that someone actually did research on the topic of literature reviews. Sandberg and Alveson took a look at the idea that there are at least three different ways that researchers explore the gap in the existing literature. They also explored an additional approach toward a research question that we'll explore as we move forward in this presentation. The first type of gap spotting is confusion spotting. In this case, while writing a literature review, the author of the review may discover that competing authors, competing researchers, don't agree with each other, or the evidence they find contradicts the evidence that others have found. A second type of gap is neglect spotting. In neglect spotting, the researcher notices that some areas have been overlooked for some time, and they may be under-researched, or they may lack empirical support. A third type of gap is application spotting. In application spotting, what the reviewer actually finds is that there are ways that in the writing, they can extend or complement the existing literature. In addition to the three types of gaps that might emerge as you continue your review of the literature, you might also discover that problematizing is an appropriate way to establish a research question or a foundation for your literature review. For example, in problematizing, we're looking at received wisdom and looking for solutions where people don't normally see that there is a problem in the first place. For example, you may have heard that it's appropriate to feed a cold and starve a fever. However, no doctor that is worth his or her salt actually will tell you to starve anything when you're sick. In the field of education, we could challenge the notion that many people hold that schooling is primarily about delivering information. The conventional wisdom is likely wrong. Or is it? What's the solution to that? We can similarly ask ourselves, is the notion of an inclusive society an automatic answer to the question of whether we provide an inclusive education? There are many, many problems there to be explored. For example, the realities of parents, of students and teachers in classrooms and within schools may be very different than what inclusive education actually conceptualizes. As you continue with your literature review, you will discover that all of these types of gaps start to emerge that you may see places where you can problematize education, the received wisdom that people believe is true, but may in fact actually present a problem for some people at some different points in time. Wait for it to develop. It won't come all at once. See you in episode three.